Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the channel, Nomad Explorers. Today, we will participate in the Surrey Fusion Festival, a multicultural festival in Surrey, a city of the province of British Columbia, Canada. To enter the festival area, you have to go through the security checkpoint. Security personnel will check your bags and backpacks to see if you have brought in weapons, drugs, or alcohol. You are not allowed to bring in large items such as large umbrellas or tents, and pets either. The first pavilion you see is of law enforcement. In Canada, there are three different levels of police forces, the federal police, the provincial police, and the city or town police. Each level of government organizes its own police force. However, if not eligible, local authorities can contract with the federal police to maintain security and order in their regions. This pavilion belongs to the Federal Police Force, RCMP, which stands for the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. As you can see, the police officers wear two different outfits. The outfits with red color are ceremonial clothes, worn on special occasions. The ones in gray and dark blue, along with the armor, are their casual uniform. This Surrey Fusion Festival was held on July 22nd and 23rd, 2023, at the Holland Park located in the city of Surrey. It was first held in 2008, and this year's festival is the 16th festival. Surrey is the second largest city by population after Vancouver and the third largest city by area in the province of BC. Surrey is the 11th largest city of Canada. This is the pavilion of the Filipino community. As you can see, in front of the gate of each pavilion is a greeting board with three lines of words. The first line is in English, meaning welcome to the pavilion. The second line has the same meaning but in that community's own language. And the third line presents the pronunciation of the second line. one of the festival stages to enjoy the musical performance of the Mexican community. One of the features of Mexican clothing is a hat made of felt or straw, called sombrero. The sombrero is a Mexican men's wide brimmed hat used to shield the wearer's face and eyes from the sun. Outside of Mexico, you can see this hat being used here and there in Spain, and in the southwestern regions of the United States. Mexico is a country in North America with an area of nearly 2 million square kilometers, making it the 13th largest country in the world. With a population of about 126 million, Mexico is the world's 10th most populous country. After more than three centuries of being colonized by Spain, the vast majority of Mexicans currently use Spanish in their daily communication. 
Because of its large population, Mexico has the largest number of Hispanic speakers in the world, including Spain. However, Spanish is not the official language of this federal state. The Mexican government recognizes 62 Native American languages as national languages because they want to develop indigenous cultures. Mexican culture is very unique. It's a combination of traditional indigenous culture and Spanish culture. Mexicans love music and dance. Mexican music sounds very joyful and strange to the ears as you are enjoying it from the video. In cultural festivals like this, each pavilion is usually divided into two areas. One area serves as a food court, used to introduce traditional dishes of their homeland to festival guests. The other area is used to introduce other traditional features such as clothes, music, or jewelry. This is the pavilion of the Ghanaian community. Ghana is a country in West Africa, with an area of about 238,000 square kilometers. With over 32 million inhabitants, Ghana is the second most populous country in West Africa, after Nigeria. African people often like dressing in colorful clothes, dancing and singing along with vibrant music. Next to Ghana is the pavilion of the Ukrainian community. Ukraine is a country in Eastern Europe, the second largest country in Europe after its neighbor Russia. Currently, the war between Russia and Ukraine causes many Ukrainians to flee to other countries, including Canada. They have been helped by the Ukrainian community here to settle their lives in Canada. The first Ukrainians immigrated to Canada around the end of the 19th century. They came to Canada in search of a better life. Most settled in the western provinces of Canada, as these provinces offer fertile soil and economic opportunity for agriculture, which is a familiar occupation for most Ukrainian migrants. The number of Ukrainians immigrating to Canada is increasing. According to 2016 census, about 4% of the Canadian population is of Ukrainian origin. And this is the Vietnamese Pavilion. Vietnam is a country located in Southeast Asia, covering an area of 331,000 square kilometers. With a population of more than 100 million people, Vietnam is the 15th most populous country in the world. The food counter of the Vietnamese Pavilion serves a number of traditional Vietnamese dishes and drinks such as Vietnamese subs grilled marinated chicken on rice, desserts, smoothies, and iced coffee. There are many people waiting in line to be served. According to the layout plan provided by the festival organizers, there are two pavilions related to Vietnam. As you can see, in this one, there are red flags with a yellow star. So maybe this pavilion is organized or coordinated by a diplomatic body of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam in Canada. 
In addition to foods, the Vietnamese pavilion also introduces Ao Dai, the traditional costume of Vietnamese women, costumes of different ethnic groups in Vietnam, decorative arts, and so on. A bicycle is a means of transportation in Vietnam and around the world and it's not strange to us. A special feature of these two bicycles is that, many of the parts of the frame were made of bamboo, a product found in many Vietnamese villages. We're standing in front of the Tongan Community Pavilion. Tonga, officially the Kingdom of Tonga, is an island nation with a population of just over 100,000 located in Polynesia, Oceania. The country covers an area of 748 square kilometers, including 171 islands, of which only 45 are inhabited. Kalunga is a traditional dance of the island nation of Tonga. This dance is a combination of the Samoan Toaluga and the Tongan Ula. Kalunga is a dance for single young women, especially for them to perform on their wedding days. However, sometimes, you may see married couples or elderly women performing this traditional dance. After passing by the Tongan Pavilion, you'll be attracted by an attractive aroma emanating from somewhere. And here's the culprit, the German pork leg ovens. Looks really delicious. ovens can bake up to 100 pork legs at the same time. A portion of grilled pork leg like this is $15, including a few pieces of sourdough bread, sauerkraut, and many pieces of grilled pork, rich in flavor. Overall, it's worth the money. Now, we go back to one of the stages to enjoy a performance by a group of teenagers. This is a pop group, non-sweet, based in Vancouver, consisting of five teenage female members. The group was founded to inspire and bring joy to people all over the world, especially girls. While offering a unique musical experience with a Japanese twist, the members aspire to lead the way for J-pop girl groups in North America. Looking at the group's Japanese-style performance outfits, you can guess that the members have some relationship with Japan.
This year's festival attracts 48 pavilions from 48 communities living in this province. Actually, it's not a major multicultural festival in Canada. Compared to the festival of the same kind, Edmonton Heritage Festival, organized in Edmonton of the neighboring province of Alberta, this festival of Surrey is smaller. The Edmonton Heritage Festival is the world's largest three-day multicultural festival. This year, this festival attracted 65 participating communities. You can watch the Edmonton Heritage Festival of the previous years on the same YouTube channel. This is the Taiwanese pavilion. Have you noticed that, in other pavilions, people just hang a flag which is the flag of the country where they were born and raised? Here, the Taiwanese flag is hung alongside the Canadian flag. Why so? That's because, Nomad just guessed, although Taiwan has its own currency, its own passport, its own internet domain, its own armed forces, and a widely accepted constitution with an independently elected president. The political and legal status of Taiwan are controversial issues on the world stage. China claims that Taiwan is Chinese territory. Therefore, the two flags are flown together to avoid that contentious issue. Here is the pavilion of the Vietnamese community living in this province. The Vietnamese communities were formed in Canada mainly after 1975. After the historical event on April 30, 1975, some overseas Vietnamese students had no choice but to stay in Canada. Vietnamese asylum seekers were allowed to settle in Canada after trying to cross the Vietnam border. The largest wave of Vietnamese refugees immigrated to Canada was between 1978 and 1986. According to Canadian statistics, there were 50,000 Vietnamese refugees in Canada. Similar to the case of Taiwan, the yellow flag with three red stripes is flown together with the Canadian flag. The yellow flag with three red stripes served as the national flag of the nation of Vietnam from 1949 to 1955 and the national flag of the Republic of Vietnam, a state that existed in South Vietnam from 1955 to April 1975. Currently, this flag does not officially represent any country. However, the overseas Vietnamese communities often use this flag to represent their communities. This is in stage for the indigenous peoples. Long time ago, this North American land belonged to the indigenous peoples, whose ancestors are believed to have migrated from Asia many thousands of years ago. These indigenous people lived by hunting, gathering, and farming. Around the 15th century, Europeans, mainly the British and the French, set foot in this land to explore new lands, serving their expansion of territories beyond Europe. The land of the indigenous peoples was gradually shrunk. Today, a number of indigenous peoples live in small, scattered communities in the Arctic. Some other peoples live in lands reserved only for them. 
The rest live in urban areas together with other communities. To serve the diverse tastes of the audience, the organizers arranged eight stages scattered throughout the park. Each stage has its own function. For example, one stage serves traditional cultural performances or contemporary performances by local artists. Another stage is for teaching cooking traditional dishes. Those who love singing and dancing can join dance lessons or enjoy dance battles at another stage. parties don't sound no alarms I'm glad to serve my sentence wrapped in your loving arms smile back at me darling and I'll cop a flea and I'll confess that I'm in love with you lock the door throw away the key Canada is present at this festival. Here, they'll provide you with information about the country, culture, and people of Canada in each different regions. This information is very useful if you're newcomers to Canada. In addition, they also have small fun activities for children.
To end today's video, please enjoy the musical performance of the Brazilian community. Brazil is the largest country in South America and Latin America. Worldwide, Brazil is the fifth largest country by area, 8.5 million square kilometers, and seventh by population, about 215 million inhabitants. It's the only country in America where Portuguese is an official language. And it's also one of the most multicultural and multi-ethnic countries, due to over a century of massive immigration from all over the world. Brazil is the country with the largest Roman Catholic population. As we all know, Brazil is famous for its football sport, and is the birthplace of football king Pelé. Brazil men's national team is the most successful in World Cup history, having won five championship titles. The women's national team has also participated in the World Cup eight times, from 1991 to 2019, with the highest achievement being runner-up in 2007. Brazil is also famous for the samba dance. The term samba originally referred to any Latin duet dances that originated from Congo and Angola. Samba has a rich cultural history with many different musical genres and styles. While the ballroom version has become popular, the original samba dance is a solo dance from Latin America. Today, samba is the most popular form of dance in Brazil, and the carnival festivals attract millions of tourists each year.